What's up guys? All right, today we'll be learning how to use Nmap to scan networks. This is the fourth video in the series. In my last video, I did hacking with Wi-Fi. Um, so this is basically once you've got into the network, now what are you gonna do? So what we're gonna be using today is Nmap. So we're gonna open up terminal and we're gonna type in Nmap and then dash H for help. Let's maximize this so we can see more of it. And Nmap has a lot of documentation. Um, so this is our basic usage, right? Nmap and the scan type, different options we want, and then our target specification. So what this is gonna use is this is gonna use IP addresses and then subnet masks if you wanna do it that way. Um, it gives us some examples and then it has host discovery. So it has different types of scans, uh, different types of techniques, uh, ports that you want to scan, um, service detection, so if you want to see what kind of apps are running, what kind of ports are open, script scan, um, a really good script to do is um, vulnerability script, it just searches for common vulnerabilities, sees if they're exploitable, uh, it's a really good one to use, I use that a lot. Um, OS detection tells you if it's running Windows 10, Windows XP, Windows 7, or if it's running Linux or OpenBSD or Mac OS. Timing, um, if your target has a scan delay or a firewall or something, you can slow down that scan to make sure that that scan actually goes through. Um, firewall evasion, another one, and then output. I usually use OA, that's just output in the three major formats, which is uh, just a TXT, XML, and then grabbable. Wait, no, those are those are different formats. Sorry, there's um, dot and map. There's dot TXT, and there's another format, but unimportant. There's just multiple formats that can be outputted if you need to use it for specific use cases. And then miscellaneous. Uh, if you're doing IPv6 scanning on like. Uh, the outranet instead of like your internal network, you might need to do something with an IPv6 because IPv4 is slowly but surely getting phased out. Um, privileged scan, underprivileged scan, and then we have examples. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Nmap. We're gonna do S, capital C for safe scripts, and then S, V to enumerate the versions of just everything that's running in the box. And then we're gonna give it our IP address. So I'm gonna do 10.0.0.1, which is my router. And then we're going to name it router. And we're gonna output it in all formats. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna send a bunch of packets to my router and it's gonna probe to see what ports are open and depending on what ports are open and how it responds, it's gonna know what OS it's running, what type of machine it is, um, just a whole bunch of information. So we're gonna hit enter and this takes a while. So we're actually gonna control C and we're gonna find my nmap. We're gonna go to the nmap directory and then we're going to cat, which is just a, um, reads out the text file, and I have it at router.nmap. And we can see that port 53 is open, which is a domain service. So it's running DM DNS MASQ, and that's version 2.7, 2.78. Uh, it's also running a web server. So most of your routers are going to be running some sort of web server, either on port 80, port 8080, or 443 if it's uh, HTTPS. Um, so we can see that it's a Netgear R7000, which is the correct name of my router. Um, there's a filtered shell, so uh, kind of like a Telnet or an SSH, but it's filtered, so it's more secure. Um, AFP, that's a router port for Netatalk, it's it's a little complicated. That's more into the networking side of this. This is more of just the exploitation side. Um, and then I have multiple ports that I um, 
port forwarded for various applications, servers, different things that I have open on my network. Um, and then it tells us that it's Unix. Um, if this was vulnerable, it would show us um, under 8080 or 548, it would show us what types of exploits it's vulnerable to. And that's what Nmap is so good at. Um, it stays up to date with all the newest exploits, all the new CVEs, and that's just what Nmap is for. So let's look at some other things. So you can also do a full network scan. Um, mine timed out because I was doing a whole bunch of other stuff on my network, but you can scan full networks. You can scan very large networks actually, and it does this very well, and it outputs each one into its own little category, and it just does this perfectly. Um, another way to look at it is ZenMap. It's a it's a GUI for Nmap. It just makes things a little bit easier if you're a beginner. There's also Armitage, which is it's actually more used for the Metasploit um, portion of that. But if you just want a clear, easy, concise way to see all of your targets that you've scanned and what ports are open, it gives you little tiny computers with a little Linux uh, symbol in it or a Windows symbol in it. You click on it. It shows you what ports are open, what services are running. It's really great for that. And I like to use it more of a, a notes folder or a roadmap to just see where I'm going and what I've done. Um, a cool scan that I saw was my 3D printer. So I have a 3D printer. I have a video up on my YouTube channel. You should check it out if you haven't. Um, I printed the Linux Tux um, little penguin, but I spelled that wrong. Um, there's only one port that's open and that is 9100 and so my 3d printer has Wi-Fi capabilities and it uses the port 9100 to send the file from my computer sliced to my 3d printer um, this is jet direct so it's the same port that's used on many inkjet printers and Canon printers to do the same thing, just send the PDF file or whatever you're printing to the printer. It's the same thing as sending a sliced 3D object to a 3D printer, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I also scanned loopback. So if you don't know what loopback is, um, if you type in ifconfig, you will see your IP address. This is a VMware IP address, so it's totally whack. Um, but you also see your loopback port. And that is 127.0.0.1. It'll always be that. Um, if I typed in scan 127, it would give me the same results as scanning our IP address. Now, this is nice. Um, if you ever just want to do a little scan on your own system just to see what's open, see if you're vulnerable to anything, Typing in 127.0.0.1 is a lot easier than going in and finding this IP address every single time. So um, it definitely has other uses and it's definitely not for this, but it's nice to have. So if you scan loopback, let's cat loopback because it takes forever to actually do. I'll do dot nmap. They're all closed. And that is because Kali Linux out of the box is very secure. Um, there's obviously a lot of things that you can do to Kali Linux to make it more secure. Um, I'll make a future video about that, about firewalls, about keeping it up to date, the different user policies, why you shouldn't stay in root, um, and just everything that goes along with keeping Kali Linux secure. But that's all for today, and I hope that you guys learned something. Um, put in the comments, tell me what you guys want to see. Um, I just want to teach you guys everything I know about computer security and about penetration testing with Kali Linux, but I don't know where to start. So put some video ideas in the comments, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.